Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, consultant, spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. And in this video, we're going to talk about lumbar laminectomy, uh, what it treats, how it's done. But then I'm going to tell you what I do instead, what I believe is a better procedure. So a laminectomy um, is usually used to treat a condition called spinal stenosis. Um, and this is narrowing of the canal or the tunnel in the middle of the spine through which the nerves run through. So if we look at, this is a crude picture here, but if we look at this being the front of the spine and this is the back, it's basically zoomed in from this picture here. So these are the building blocks of the spine, they're called vertebral bodies, which have an arch attached to the back of them. And that creates a tunnel in the middle. And over the years with wear and tear, that tunnel can get narrow and the nerves can become a bit squashed. And as a result, that tends to cause pain radiating down the legs, which gets worse when you stand and walk for a period of time. When you sit down and rest, it tends to, to stop. The narrowing itself, or the stenosis, the narrowing, is usually, most of it comes from thickening of this ligament here, what we call ligamentum flavum. It's one of the straps of tissue between the arches um, at the back of the spine. And sometimes what happens is, as a result of a disc gradually collapsing, um, the ligament starts to thicken up and buckle, so it pokes inwards towards the spine, um, causing the narrowing. So have a look at a cross section of the spine. So this here is the back, this is the front and right and left sides. Um, this here is the spinal canal, the tunnel through which the spinal cord and all the nerves run through. The other thing that causes the narrowing, not just a ligament which usually sits at the back here, compressing it in the disc, but these joints here, quite importantly, the facet joints, where one bone sits on top of the other, these are the two areas that join them and allow a little bit of movement. And over time, uh, with wear and tear, these can start, the bone here starts to overgrow a little bit, thicken up, and start to encroach inwards onto the canal and also cause a narrowing. So for a laminectomy, you put to sleep, you're not aware of anything, you're lying on your front. So this is now back of the spine, front of the spine. There's a small incision made at the top through the skin where you go down, move the muscle out of the way and expose the midline. And wherever the narrowing is, it's usually it involves two, two of these arches of bone. You just remove the whole of that arch and then undercut the facet. So again, on a cross section of that, this being the front and the back, this here is, is the lamina, this arch of bone at the back. So what the surgeon does is, is essentially you cut from here and here and then remove this upside down Y structure so that the back of the, so that there's no longer an arch at the back of the bit that's narrow um, and it frees everything up. So the problem I have with that is at the back of the spine here, these bits that stick out from the arch to spinous process, there's a ligament that straps these bones together called the interspinous ligament. And it's one of the ligaments along with the muscles that run up and down the back here. It's one of the muscles that kind of maintains stability of the spine, holds it in that nice kind of upright backward arch. When you do a laminectomy, if you're removing two of these, two of these bones together, therefore there's disruption of that tension band that runs up and down the back. If you end up doing, if you have to have say two levels of a laminectomy done, two levels where there's compression, over time it can cause the spine to just gradually lean forwards like this, you know, weaken and gradually lean forwards. And in some cases, if you end up taking too much of this joint away, undercutting these joints at the back, the facet joint, too much of it, it can cause what is called a spondylolisthesis, where one of the bones starts to slip forward over the other bones. And that may need further surgery in, uh, in the future, such as a fusion. And interestingly, some surgeons for, a, for simple decompression, where someone just has narrowing or stenosis of the spine, do a fusion as a first line measure, which I think is too excessive. So my preference is a minimally invasive posterior lumbar decompression. So let me explain what that is. If we just zoom in here, um, this is a similar picture to before. So this is the, the front of the spine here. This is the arch of bone at the back, and this is the spinous process, that big chunk of bone sticking out where I said the ligaments attached to. And either side, you've got these two great big muscles. Rather than come down the middle and remove the whole of this arch, what I tend to do is, through the incision, I just make a channel through the muscle here, 
um, between this bone and the muscle rather. And then through this arch at the back on one side only, I open up a little window under the microscope. And so you're looking down with these retractors that allows me access into the back of the spine through the channel I've made, through the window I've made under the microscope. I've left this bone where it is. I've left the ligament attached to it. All the muscle on the other side is attached to it. So there's no disruption of that midline uh, tension band. Once I've come in through that window with my instruments, I can get in and undercut this facet joint here as well as this one. Any ligament here at the back of the spine I can remove completely and I can also explore the disc if I need to. If there's a lot of disc poking out, I can explore that as well. Um, that's less invasive because it's just a small window, a tiny amount of muscular disrupt disruption which repairs itself very easily, but I'm not um, I'm not interfering with that midline tension band and therefore reducing the chances of instability later on. So to explain it again on this model, this is the back of the spine here. In a laminectomy, we remove this whole thing here, the spinous process, and then the arch here at the back of the spine. With the method I'm talking about is the minimally invasive method. We try and keep um, these bones preserved and the band of tissue that keeps this upright and helps hold us upright, we keep that preserved. So I literally come in through a very small incision just overlying these two bones here. I come in through the side slightly and that gap there, um, I exploit it. I shave away a bit of that bone there and a bit of that bone there. So I've got a nice open window looking into the spine under a microscope where it's all magnified. And then I undercut that bit of the facet joint there as well as that bit of the facet joint there. Um, just to widen it, make more room, and then remove all the thick and ligament in between. And under the microscope, I can actually see the ligament, I can see the nerves, and I know once the job's done that the nerves are all free. So with this method, it's much less invasive, which means less tissue disruption, uh, quicker recovery, and less likely for the need for further surgery or effusion uh, later on. And that's our mission at the Spine MDT, to find the least invasive solution that gives you the longest lasting result. Don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel. And please feel free to visit us at spinemdt.com to see how we can help you. Thank you for watching.